Welcome back to Traveling Dice, I'm Jason. Years ago I wanted to add some tree kin to my Wood Elf army, and at the time these were the models that were available. Now, in all fairness, I wasn't particularly crazy about these models, and in addition to that, the cost per model at the time was roughly $20. They were kind of hard to find, and when you could, they were rather expensive. So I wasn't super excited about paying $20 per model. A unit of six was going to cost $120, uh, a unit of $980. If you're filling multiple units, this is quickly really adding up. So I held off for a long time. But I did find these old metal dryads. So in my Wood Elf Army, I was using the newer plastic ones. But I found these old metal dryads for a dollar a piece, which is just a bargain. Now, granted, you may not be able to find these for um, such an inexpensive cost. Um, but they are going to be a lot cheaper than purchasing those old tree ken models. So I went about trying to convert these and beefing them up a bit uh, so that they could actually serve as tree ken. So the very first thing that I'm wanting to do is make them taller. So I'm going to beef out these models by one, increasing the height, and then two, increasing kind of the mass by adding um, various branches that are coming out of their shoulders, their back, um, their sides, etc. So, but I would start off first by adding the height. And I'm actually going to cut off the bottom part of the leg. And I'm, I'm trying to aim for what is looking like a knee, right? Where the leg has a natural bend because I don't want to have to try to recreate that bend. So I'm just going to cut it at that point on both legs. And then I file it smooth so that I have a, a kind of a flat surface to work with. And in each of these spots, I'm going to drill a hole where I'm going to add the new leg. Now, I couldn't find the, the pin and drill that I wanted to use. So I'm, I'm kind of using my backup here, which is not, um, it's not perfect for this task. But uh, drilling a hole is going to make this process a lot easier as opposed to just trying to uh, attach uh, um, an armature without drilling the hole. So once I have the holes drilled, it's time to add just the, the temporary leg where I'm going to add my sculpting material. So to sculpt the legs, ultimately I'm going to be using green stuff, um, but to get that initial armature there of what will be the bottom portion of the legs, I'm simply using really thick toothpicks. And my holes that I had to drill were a little bit too big. Like I said, I couldn't find the drill that I wanted to use. Um, now, if your holes are a little big, you can put a little green stuff in there and then that will kind of hold you the, the toothpick or whatever you're using in place. I, I do like toothpicks. Um, they seem to be about the right consistency. They're cheap. They're readily available. They're easy to cut because I just use the entire toothpick and then I'm just simply going to cut it down to size. But here I am um, making up a little batch of green stuff. My green stuff too on this project was actually kind of old. I've since um, purchased a a newer pack um, and I kind of purchased the the big supply but I think they do have a little bit of a shelf life here so working the toothpick in you want to consider the angle uh, right so you're you're gonna be able to change the length by simply cutting it um, but the angle of of it's going to be hard to change once you're uh, glue and anything else you're using to hold in place once that sets. So do consider the angle here, um, but don't worry so much about the length because I'm just using the whole toothpick knowing that uh, at a later time I'm going to just um, snip it to the correct length that I want. So at this point the uh, glue and the green stuff that I use to attach the legs have set and I'm using just a, a previous one that I created so I can get an idea. I want them to be similar in height. I don't think it's absolutely critical that they're exactly the same or anything like that, but I don't want them to be um, too much variation between them. I think generally troops are about the same height in Warhammer. I think it might stand out if one was particularly taller. But you know what? Some variants might actually look good. So I think that this is kind of a stylistic choice, but I just mark it with a Sharpie uh, so that they're all similar in height. And then I'm just going to literally snip those toothpicks down um, so that they're that height. Now, how much height do I add to the, the dryads? I think I'm adding probably about half an inch of height based on uh, what the model was previously. Um, and that's, that's an estimation here after the fact. But uh, I think you do want them to be um, noticeably taller because you are making them into monstrous infantry. Um, so it, it implies that they're, they're bigger. You do want them to be, you know, troll, ogre, minotaur, 
size. So if you have any of those models, I think that's a good reference as well in terms of how much height you want to add. All right, so now it's time to add these guys to the 40 millimeter base. And you have a couple options here. So you're adding, uh, um, you're gluing down that toothpick, which is, this is a really narrow point. Uh, you can try it just with glue and, and I've done that and you can be successful with that. Um, probably easiest if you put just a little tiny bit of green stuff there uh, as to like have create this little like receiving in for the toothpick where you want it. And I think that that's going to make your life a lot easier when you're trying to attach this. But this really is kind of a temporary attachment just so that it's on the base so that you can put your sculpting material around the toothpick. And then once that sculpting material, in this case, I'm using green stuff, once that hardens and dries, uh, then that really is adhering the piece very strongly uh, to the base. And not only where the toothpick meets the base, but also where the toothpick meets the bottom is going to be... Um, secured even more than it was previously, even with pinning that toothpick in place. So I do suggest using a little bit of, of green stuff or something like that. And then once you have it set up, just leave it in a spot where it can dry. You want this to be completely dry before you go on and try to go on to the next step. So I think it's good to do these guys in batches because you do want each step to be uh, completely cured, completely dried uh, before you're moving on. Uh, so I don't think this is the kind of project that you're probably going to finish in one sitting. It's something you definitely want to uh, probably come back to. But you're just going to repeat this for however many of these guys that you're making. When it comes to adding detail to the sculpting material, whether it's green stuff or something else, I like tools like this. Uh, you can find these tools uh, online or at various uh, hobby shops, but they kind of look like dental tools and they're really good for adding in various details. You can of course use, if you're just looking for a pointed in uh, X-Acto knife or something like that. So you can probably get by without them depending upon what you're doing. But having a set of these can be pretty handy. So what I do is I add my sculpting material, the green stuff around the toothpick so that the toothpick is completely enveloped in the, the sculpting material. And I'm trying to add um, the right mass before I even start sculpting so that I, I have the, the thickness that I'm going for. And I'm just kind of eyeballing that and trying to make it relatively uniform, definitely between the two legs on the same model, but then, you know, somewhat uniform from model to model. But I think it's more critical to have the two legs on one model be similar mass than model A to model B, uh, for example. But you can kind of eyeball this fairly well, I think. Once you have the right amount of sculpting material on there, I'm using the pointy um, utensil, the one that looks like the what the dentist would have. And I'm just kind of making these bark lines by dragging it kind of up and down uh, that leg. So making a, a similar bark material. And I'm trying to match it to uh, what the model had uh, on the upper leg that's going to attach to the portion that I'm creating. Now, you're never going to match it perfectly, but I think you can get it pretty close. And in terms of sculpting, uh, this is probably some of the easier sculpting that you can do. So if you haven't worked with green stuff before, uh, I actually think that this is a, a really good introductory uh, process here. Now, occasionally you see me dipping my instrument in something. I like to have a little cup of water nearby because I find that sometimes the green stuff is really tacky and it kind of will start to stick to my utensil as I'm trying to manipulate it. And I don't want that. So I'll dip the utensil in water and then um, go back and, and work on it. And I find that with the tip of the utensil moist, that it doesn't tend to stick to what I'm working on. And, and it allows for that process just to go a little easier. I've heard some people um, use Vaseline um, a little bit, but then I think um, you would probably have to wash the model after it cured. Um, probably with like an old toothbrush and soapy water. So that might be easier because you probably only need to dip it in the Vaseline one time, whereas I, I kind of keep going back to the water. But I think the water is just a little bit cleaner and, and then I don't have to worry about having Vaseline on my hands or getting on my clothes or I don't know, stuff like that. But I, I have heard that some people will use Vaseline to uh, accomplish this as well. But I just keep doing this process until I'm, I'm happy with what I'm seeing and I'm going to repeat this for both legs. Down at the bottom uh, where the leg is meeting the uh, base, I do try to kind of carve out like roots that are then kind of dragging off and, and going off in different directions just like a tree would have. So 
essentially, if you just imagine a big tree and seeing kind of the roots span off uh, at the surface level, I do try to create that effect uh, on the tree cam models here at where the legs are meeting the base. And I simply repeat this for all of the models that I'm currently working on. All right, so the very last step here now that I have the height and I have the legs done is to kind of beef out the, the body, the mass of the tree kin here. And I am using bits from the plastic dryad kit. So I have a bunch of those dryads in my army, so I have a bunch of extra of those branches. If you didn't have those, you know, you could make armatures for this and um, pin in some... Um, paper clips and then add a little sculpting material onto those. That would be um, pretty labor intensive, but uh, you could make them exactly how you wanted them. It would be kind of cool. You could just follow a similar process to the legs. Um, and I think that that would work well. Uh, and then you could make them super unique. Um, but I had these bits already, so I decided to go ahead and use them. And for each of the tree kin models, I simply add two or three of these bits. Uh, usually one coming off the shoulder back area, another one coming off the shoulder back area, and then one coming from the torso and kind of going off in slightly different directions just to kind of fill out that mass. Um, and these bits work particularly well to that effect. I did pin them in place. So I used a paper clip to, um, I pinned it into the branch and then drilled the hole and then pinned it into the model. And I think that that makes it one easier to put together and then a little bit more durable. If you just uh, glued it on, I think you run the risk of them popping off later on. You could do that and just reattach it. If it pops off, it's not the end of the world. And, you know, depending upon what paints and stuff you're using, it, it might um, support it. But once you have those bits in place, your tree can is ready for paint. And here's what a unit of these guys look like all finished up converted and painted and of course if you've been enjoying the escalation campaign between the wood elves and the orcs and goblins you've seen these guys a bunch um, but that is how they were created um, good luck if you go and create your own or um, share in the comments if you have any other cool conversions that you've done or any questions if you've enjoyed the video and you know someone that also would enjoy it please share it with them bye for now